Again, I'm Rod Meyer, and for 20 years I was the director of historic Bethabra Park. Bethabra was the first 1753 settlement of uh, what was to become Wachovia. Wachovia was nearly 100,000 acres. It includes most of what is Forsyth County today. Most people think of it as a Moravian, Moravian settlement, but in my researches, I have found out how important it was to the development of the British Empire. <coughs> Excuse me. The British Empire was set up with four uh, points of power. The king himself, the king's councils in charge of immigration, trade, foreign affairs, uh, and military activities. The other uh, point of power was the parliament, of course. And the fourth was the colonies that were out there so far away, actually, that they were sort of out of the purview of everybody in London. And so they sort of uh, became their own uh, self-motivating operations supported by London. And Wachovia was one of these. Uh, an example of uh, these power, these colonial power things is say the East Indian Company uh, and here in the colonies, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Williamsburg, and here in North Carolina, Wachovia. It is as if um, um, Mercedes and BMW moved a plant into the middle of nowhere, and the impact of such a such a move would would uh, just uh, accelerate all kinds of activities. And so, uh, the uh, one of the uh, one one of the um, one of these councils. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Um, had a project of developing a map of the colonies from New Jersey to North Carolina. And uh, later on, they contracted with a army officer to develop, named Dalrymple, to develop a map of the road going through the Shenandoah Valley from Pennsylvania and ending here in Wachovia, and that's the Great Wagon Road. Uh, my, my early activities 20 years ago was to establish where this road was, here locally, whatever. Um, since I retired, <laughs> um, there's been an amazing amount of uh, activity of interest in where's the Great Wagon Road, wherever. And actually, people have published articles showing the Great Wagon Road starting out and going through Eastern Carolina all the way through Mount Airy. Um, another, another rendition of this is it never came to Wachovia. It went through small towns north of here. Uh, another rend rendition was uh, Wikipedia, an open source. Uh, so anybody with a farm road with... with uh, uh, that was part of the Great Wagon Road, and so it was just a mishmash of, of problems. I went to a, to a presentation one time uh, <clears throat> on Cornwallis's uh, um, route through Wachovia, and I mentioned the Great Wagon Road, and, and the lecturer uh, st stopped everything and corrected me. He said, there was no such thing as a Great Wagon Road. There were just a lot of little tiny roads that went to the port. So, um, four years ago, the archives uh, in, in Winston-Salem put me together with uh, Will and his group, and they wanted to um, preserve a record of the roads that went through Wachovia because of all the development and whatever. And... <clears throat> And the latest development is a ring road that is being built around the city, six lanes, 
and it's cutting through all the, uh, the Great Wagon Road routes. Now, one of the things that happened to, um, to encourage the development of this 100,000 acres is that the, um, the King's Councils, uh, through the governor and the, uh, the um, uh, uh, county justices, allowed five roads to be built through Wachovia to develop Wachovia and these five roads, called King's Roads, were a part of the King's Road. And they would rejoin in Salisbury, which is the, uh, uh, the next county down, and then become part of the Great Wagon Road on its way to Augusta, Georgia. So, anyway, those roads are part of the matrix that makes the main thoroughfares through the city of Winston-Salem. And again, so much development has happened since I retired. I went out to double check things where roads went through fields are now housing developments or factories have been built and things. But I know what they were. We've recorded them. And so uh, <clears throat> um, we, will, we will make the, what we're recording here available to everybody through a website and try to clear up all of this and make this a part of the permanent record. And Willa will explain how this was all done. Thanks a lot. So yeah, as uh, Rod mentioned, um, this project began, we were, our office went and was touring the Moravian archives over in Old Salem. And we met Rod that day and uh, we decided this, you know, after hearing about his research that this would be a good project um, to use some story maps to kind of preserve his research and you know then share it with the public. Um, so after our initial meeting in the archives, um, Rod began coming to our office um, and meeting in our small conference room. And we had a TV up on the wall um, that I would you know share my laptop screen with, and Rod would stand up there, and I'd pull up various um, you know GIS layers, um, you know, different years of aerial photography. Um, the, the hill shades that we had created from the LIDAR data from the state. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, Rod could even pick out the routes. Um, he had walked a lot of these routes um, back in the 90s. And so he could even pick out some of the routes um, cutting through the woods and, and various fields and backyards and everything um, on those um, hill shade views that we had um, pulled up from the LIDAR data. And so, we also referenced a lot of the old Moravian maps and diaries, a lot of the, the old Moravian maps. We were able to georeference, line them up with some of the creek and river networks um, to georeference them and, and help trace some of the routes that way as well. Um, and you know, then we incorporate a lot of just your Rod's uh, knowledge from you know, service director of Bethabra Park and the research he's done over the years. But um, not too long after we've been in the project, uh, uh, COVID-19 um, created some issues for us. We couldn't meet in the office anymore. And so we had to shift to, you know, just sharing documents digitally and continuing the, the project that way. So that kind of slowed us down a little bit, um, but we're, we're kind of nearing completion. We've got Rod's final documents, um, a copy of those um, we just received in February, I mean, in, in January. So we're working through those. And uh, once we get those completed, we'll be sharing it through our Map for Scythe um, Map Gallery on our website. Um, after, when we initially started the project, um, we, we decided to go with the, the journal style story map um, to kind of guide people through like the tour of the roads in a way. Um, and so when we got done, we ended up organizing everything in a hub site. Um, so on the main hub site here, um, if you can scroll down. We've got a kind of a general introduction at the bottom of the page for the entire kind of road project. And then at the top, we've got links to various renditions of the Great Wagon Road um, as it kind of progressed through the years. So initially, like 1753 through 1754, there was the unofficial King's Road um, that, um, you know, 
some of the Moravian settlers earlier routes that weren't like an officially King's sanctioned road yet. And in 1754, we got the different rendition where it became um, the, the King's Road. 1764, we got um, another rendition, um, 1766 and then 1770. So each of, each of these um, kind of snapshots of the road through different periods of time are capturing you know, different priorities of the Moravians as they work through the landscape. You know, initially they were more focused on the Bethabra um, settlement, then Bethania, and then finally Old Salem. And so we, we set up different story maps for each of those versions of the road. Um, and I'll go ahead and pull up the first, the, what we're referring to as the unofficial road, the earliest version. Um, on the hub site, that then takes you to another introduction for that specific version of the road. And then we've got links to the story maps here. We, we found that there is a limit to how many slides you could include in a journal style story map. So we had to do a part one and part two for each of these um, versions of the, the Great Wagon Road. So if I go and pull up the first part here. Um, we initially come up with an introduction and we tried to embed different links to um, different supporting documents and stuff. So most of the text that will be on the left side here is directly from Rod's notes and his research. Um, but we also have links. Here's a link to um, a map from the Library of Congress website. Um, this is actually a map that uh, Peter, Peter Jefferson worked on. That was Thomas Jefferson's father. He did a lot of map work early on. Um, then we've also got links to some of Rod's field notes. So these are some sketches he did when he was walking the routes and everything in the 90s. And then as we start stepping through, it shifts the focus and, and lets you follow along the road route as we look at different points of interest along the routes. So we got a different set of field notes here from Rod Got a link to that. Um, Altum's farm was uh, kind of an important spot as the Moravians were initially settling the area. Um, this is a link here to some of the um, the early Moravian maps. These are this one in particular is from the archives in Herrenhut, uh, Germany. And so, um, you know, from this link, you can zoom in and see the Wachovia track and some traces of the, the early road routes and, you know, different features on there. We also have um, links to the Moravian diaries. Um, so some of these are journal entries that discuss their travels along the route and then you know, different things they recorded after they settled with Abra and eventually Old Salem. They also have some maps included in this. And once you're on the link, you can, you know, flip the pages and browse through those journal entries. So there's a lot of supplemental um, research in here. Um, as we continue down the road, um, we also embedded some Google Street views of, of certain key areas that Rod had pointed out to us. So we can pull those up in the story map as well. And so this is the Rosebud Road um, in Stokes County coming down to the area that would have been Altum's Farm, um, most likely. You can pan around and see that area as it is now. And then we've also, um, to give some different perspectives of the areas that we're highlighting on here, we also included links that will turn on like the the, air, the, the current ortho imagery from NC1 map. And then we also have places I can show later that we're pulling in like the older, like 1993 historic ortho imagery that you know, kind of shows the landscape more as it was when Rod was walking and doing his research in the 90s, walking these paths. We 
also got different links to other articles like Wikipedia or NCpedia on some different topics that pertain to the routes. Uh, here's a example of the 1993 imagery. Um, so there's been some development through this stretch around the Townport Creek settlement area. So we can still see the, the old warehouses that were there in the 90s also, but um, we can, and, and the user can also zoom in over here on the map side as well on the main stage of the journal. But we can zoom in and see like where the, the Ford was across Buffalo Creek. And so that area has seen like some, some buildings and development have sprung up in the years since this 1990 imagery was taken. So we can kind of get a little more of a historical snapshot there. Um, we've also got different street views of that area. So this is looking back from the, the main road, um, looking back to where the Ford of the Buffalo Creek would have been in that Town Fork settlement area. It would have been behind these uh, tractor trailers, everything back in the distance there. And then um, I'll shift down to the Bethabra Park area. Skip ahead to that. So here is uh, the, the Bethabra Park area where the road, this was one of their original settlement set settlements. Um, so here we can see if we turn on the, the hillshade with the elevation model draped over it, you can kind of really see some of the details at the park. Um, so you can actually see like down here, there's like the basement of some of the initial settlement some of the buildings that were originally constructed there. The stockade is in this region here. That would have been around their settlement. Um, we got different points of interest here. Uh, there was a, a garden that's been recreated that was like a medicinal garden. You can see some of the rows and the paths cutting through the garden there on the, the hillshade, um, or, along with the original cabin that they initially stayed at when they arrived there. That's been reconstructed. Come down here, there's a photo of the reconstruction of the cabin there that's at Bethabra Park. Um, we also have some videos that Rod helped produce while he was director at Bethabra Park. And those come on and discuss some of the history there from the Bethabra Park area. We got links to some of those throughout the throughout the different story maps, and I'll go ahead and skip ahead real quick um, and just show on the first Kings Road. We also tried to include some of the photos that Rod took while he was walking the routes initially back in the nineties. Here's some of the photos. So here's a link to a photo that Rod made out in the field of a mill site. And then I'll just show one more from the shallow Ford area. One of the actual shallow Ford. Yeah, here's that one. So that shows the shallow Ford where they would have forded at that point. So we, we try to incorporate links to a lot of supplemental material to, to help, um, you know, kind of bring to life more of the project and supplement the notes that Rod provided us with. So I believe that's kind of our time limit. Are there any questions?
Yes. Um, do you want to? Did, did any of the, the route follow the Indian trading path? Been four years now. So. <laughs> yes. Um, so I know um, she asked if there be archaeological work done along the path. So there's been quite a bit done. I think at Bethabra Park, where Rod was director, they've excavated those basements. I think it eventually became farmland, and they've excavated a lot of the basements and things like that. Rebuilt the stockade. Well, I was there. By the way, these maps I'm talking about that we access from Germany and done the everything for largely drawn by one man, uh, Christian Leiter. And he's a very interesting uh, 18th century character. He was a naturalist. He wanted us to list of all the native trees and plants and what they were used for. Uh, I, I used his maps walking around have located from the maps springs, uh, catches of uh, stones for walls, uh, all kinds of information. And one thing he did that sounds familiar to all of you, uh, he worked closely with the Moravian leadership uh, to help solve problems. Uh, that is to say he recorded all the roads, but they didn't have a political problem project the road that was never built uh, for their consideration. Uh, that should sound familiar. And some of the maps that we produced in the records of the Marine were projects that were never, never built. And, uh, uh, and the person who did the editing of the volumes had no idea that these had never been built. But, and he was a